So now we're going to shift gears, and now the next thing we're going to be talking talking about, and there'll be a playlist in the series now of mechanisms. Okay. So this is a step-by-step -step process um, of these various mechanisms, translation, and as we're going to see just now in a minute, as you can see behind me, how the ribosome, as it is translating a protein with an N-terminus signal sequence, actually gets brought over to the ER, docks, and then how that protein actually gets into the ER. So again, there's going to be a series of these types of mechanisms where we're going to have step-by-step -step processes that I'll be shooting video for. So again, let's go through the first one here. Okay. <clears throat> so the way the system starts out, right? You have your messenger RNA, mature messenger RNA, leaves the nucleus, comes out into the cytoplasm, and hooks up with the ribosome. The ribosome, as you can see, binds to the messenger RNA at the five prime end. And remember, this reads 5' prime to 3'. Prime. <clears throat> so as the ribosome starts scanning 5' prime to 3'', prime, it begins translation. And as you can see here, coming out of the ribosome are the amino acids as they are being attached. So here you have the blue pearls followed by these pink pearls. The pink pearl here is representing the N terminus, okay? the NH3 terminus here. And as you can see, it's pink because this N terminus is representing where the signal sequence is coming. Okay? So remember, the signal sequence is your ticket to get into the ER, the endoplasmic reticulum. So the signal sequence emerges from the ribosome. When this happens, this is going to cause the SRP, the signal recognition particle, out here to go ahead and bind to the ribosome and to the signal sequence. The signal recognition particle is a cytoplasmic protein which lives and exists out in the cytoplasm. So it comes in, it's going to bind again to the signal sequence, and then the same protein has a long domain that binds to the ribosome. So again, the anatomy of the SRP is important to know. So the SRP has a P9-14 domain. This is the part that's responsible for binding to the ribosome and it binds specifically to the A site of the ribosome. By binding to the A site, this puts translation on pause. So translation has been stopped temporarily. At the same time then, the SRP also has another domain, the P54. The P54 region is responsible for binding to the si recognizing and binding to the signal sequence. So once the SRP has bound to both the signal sequence and to the ribosome, it's going to simply escort the ribosome and the protein over to the ER. Once at the ER membrane, the SRP binds to an SRP receptor, and then this also helps to dock or attach the ribosome onto a translocon. This is translocon is what's known as a gated channel found on the ER membrane, and it's gated because it's always closed up until a ribosome binds to it. So in other words, you could call the translocon a ribosome-gated channel. So once the ribosome has been docked to the translocon, the SRP has done its job and it leaves. <coughs> and then, so when the SRP leaves, because it's been released now, that means that the A site of the ribosome is now available. So translation restarts, and as that happens, the translocon has opened up, and now the end terminus of the protein goes is threaded through the translocon into the ER. The rest of the protein continues to be made because, again, translation has been restarted. And as the protein comes through, there's another enzyme an ER resident enzyme called the signal peptidase. The signal peptidase is simply going to clip off the signal sequence. Again, just like going to the movies. You have your ticket. Before you go into the movie, you turn in your ticket to the person at the front gate. They say, okay, theater two, and they tear your ticket. That's what signal peptidase is doing. Welcome to the ER. 
Let me take your ticket for you. Then the rest of the protein continues to get made, falls into the ER, and then it starts to fold up. And then of course, over here in this step seven, what's being illustrated is that somewhere towards the three prime end of the messenger RNA, the ribosome has clearly come across one of the three stop codons. Remember the three stop codons were UAA, UAG, and UGA. When one of those three stop codons is read by the ribosome, a transfer RNA lookalike enters the A site and causes the ribosome to dissociate. And that's exactly what you see here in step seven. So if the ribosome is disassociating, it detaches from the translocon, thus the translocon closes up, the protein has ended up on the inside of the ER, begins to fold, and then as we'll see in the next couple episodes, is going to be processed in the ER.